we're just going to move on to the pitch session next. Um, the health startup pitch. And the judges for this are Ebi Ofri, he's the CEO of Jeroke. Please give me a round of applause as he comes on stage. And then next we have Doc Neto. You are part of the judges. Yes, um, Neto Ikbeme, he's the CEO of Wella Health. He's also a judge. And um, lastly, we have Ijoma Onoha, the Vice President of Sales, Pan-Africa for Seven Rivers Lab by 54 Gen. Let's clap for them, please. Um, please, can the judges be quick to the stage, please? We are, we are really out of time. So for the next four minutes, um, startup is going to be pitching to us. I don't know the startup, uh, you find that out in time. Um, please wear your masks. Please wear your masks. If you're not wearing your mask, wear your mask. It's very important, please. Please wear your mask, please, I beg. Because the government people are here, they will carry you, it's not, it's not me. Please wear your masks, very important. Why are you pointing to me, what did I do? I didn't do anything, I'm just passing a message. I can't wear a mask and talk now, please, no vex. <laughs> okay, um, okay, please give them a round of applause. And the startup that is coming to pitch, you're pitching for four minutes. If it goes above four minutes, I will take the mic, no vex. We are way over time. Thank you very much. A round of applause, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Nelson Ibiriki. I'm CEO and co-founder of Mesic Africa. I once had a neighbor of the name Mama Shikudi. She was diagnosed with hypertension. A mother of three, having businesses to run, it means she was in a state that required her to be strenuous daily. But then, there are hundreds of devices that are available in the marketplace for doctors to be able to get her vitals to manage her conditions. But the problem with this is that these devices work on custom builders. It means doctors need hundreds of help. As a result, she couldn't get the best of all care she died and leaving behind three children. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally. It kills 18.6 million persons yearly. In Nigeria, it's still the number one, one out of every 10 in Nigeria. And this becomes a problem when people diagnosed with high pressure, they live an average of five to seven years. And with the number of people diagnosed with heart condition at 35.3 million, it means we are heading for a pandemic. This is where Mesec Africa comes in. We built for cardio an app to be able to enable doctors to track and also plan and treat patients with heart conditions. The app works simply. You connect a patient or device to the app, and this device from, is from different sources. That means if you're using Omron, you're using any other devices that are available out there. It's connected to a single app. It sends to the doctor. We provide analytics because we leverage on data to be able to help doctor get better informed choices, give the patient emergency warning for instances of heart attack, and provide better care for the patient. We are giving directly to target to clinics. And we want to, we are running a subscription plan directly for clinics. And clinics care about our product because when you visit the hospital, you get major care and you go home. But people with heart condition, they need dedicated care and monitoring because any activity could cause a spike, could cause a heart attack. So they need basic care. So we provide the services and their doctors be able to track them to improve their health. Before we wrote our first line of code, we signed the first client, a clinic with about 1,000 patients waiting for this product. And we signed an amazing partnership with Novartis. Novartis did one of the largest research into heart condition in the past 10 years in Brazil and in Europe. 
As I speak to you, we have a dedicated team working from Kigali with us to solve heart condition from the Novartis Foundation and in support with Norskin Foundation in Kigali. Our market strategy going into this is targeting clinic and it gives us an opportunity to service a large market of 2.2 billion users. And our direct competitors are simply um, Helium Head, um, Doctora, and other platforms available out there. But they only provide electronic health record monitoring and telemedicine care. They don't support heart condition and cardiovascular disease. Other manufacturers, fine, they have devices and apps that work, but they only work on custom built app. Our services is designed for both the patient, the caregiver, and also the manufacturer, because we'll give them feedback on how their devices are performing and improving the care of patients. Our official roadmap is simply on track. We are currently integrating devices, the home run, Apple 4 and 5, which are FDA approved because we know they are handy. Patients use them daily, they, they, daily and are we targeting clinics in Nigeria. And with 800,000 users, we will get an average revenue monthly about 200,000 Naira. My team is the best bet to win. We have seven years experience working in the health sector. I personally, I manage tech solution for 80 hospitals in Nigeria across 12 states. I am a seasoned professional and an advanced level medical engineer. We are the best bet to win. We have the technical support. We have the data sets. We have the skills to move. But we need funding to push. We have the users waiting. And we need the key products to push this. We're currently raising and we want to build to solve this problem. We see for cardio as simply a medical infrastructure that is built to solve all layers of medical decision making. It means with our solution, we want to help doctors get better informed decision. You have a friend, you have somebody that you know has heart condition. And our goal is simply, we don't want you to lose someone to heart condition. It's happening. Someone will die of heart condition in the next one hour. We don't want that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judges, please. Here. Yeah. Um, well done, really good pitch, um, and great work that you've done. Um, I'm going to put on my physician hat here and ask, what is the evidence that your app actually improves the outcomes for heart disease? Okay, so basically, um, when we started uh, building, and we were fortunate to work with Novartis, so what they did in Brazil, as a specific case, now they collated data from patients when they come to take their vitals in the hospitals. So over a period of time, they developed a tool that could help doctors track what are the changes in their heart condition. Okay, why could they not detect certain heart attack? For instance, a patient died. And one of the opportunities placed with us is that we can use data to enable doctors to predict probably a patient might be on track to have heart condition. Imagine you're having an eye wash for, which can give, give doctor an insight. It's FDA approved, I watch four and five. FDA so so my, my follow up to that is I'm a doctor, so I want you to get technical with me and tell me what it is exactly that you're gonna predict using the data that you have. Okay, basically, um, one, uh, instances of heart attack. Two, better informed choices. We give you analytics tools. For instance, you want to plan how you treat your patient, the lifestyle you want to do, patient you want to do. For instance, you are doing follow-up consultation, you call your patient and you ask your patient, okay, I've seen this spike in your blood pressure. What did you do? What did you take? Oh, this is doing better. Please follow this course. Follow this procedure. That is the better informed choices we provide to doctors. Thank you. Okay, um, hi, well done. Thank you. Okay, my question is, I mean, we all understand how sudden heart attacks can be, right? So if you get 
sort of like a notification that someone's, uh, you know, um, there's a spike in their heart, heart at, at activity and they're about to have a, a heart attack. What can you really do to, to, you know, like to change the outcome? What can possibly happen? Because let's assume that the doctor is somewhere in VI and this person is in Ikeja. You know, what exactly happens right. then? I, I think telemedicine has broken that barrier that she could get a notification and instantly get on a call. And there is something we're integrating into our system. A caregiver, it could be your family member, it could be a friend that gets notification. You just assign the person. We were embedding phone number because we know network is not reliable. So in that case, if it's your mom or maybe your spouse and there is a tendency of heart attack and your doctor is notified, your doctor tried to reach you, he did not get to reach you. The second person, they have to get to reach you, like, who is close by to this person? Whatever the person is doing, maybe the person is trying to go into a fight with somebody. And someone tell you that something is happening from this, stay and stop doing what you're doing. So basically that's what we do. We look at uh, how to enable both the caregivers to get notification, instances of video call, voice call, and instances of notifying someone that is a loved one that is trusted to be able to notified in case of working network connectivity, we know not always your phone data is on, and we might be in an area where there's no network coverage. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I just have two quick questions. Because I wasn't totally clear on how the information gets into the app. You said it can be gotten from various sources. From those sources, how do they get into the application? You also mentioned the users are the clinics. So do the clinics have the system and offer it to their patients to upload by themselves? Or how does the patient's information get to the application? If it's used by the clinic and the patient is at home. All right. So um, to answer your first question, um, the process of integrating third user devices has been existing. One, I'll give you a case study, Kids Class Pro. Over 700 devices in a single app. So it's something that has been existing. They are over six years in operation. So it's a model we can replicate. Secondly, um, I didn't get the second part of your question. If you could repeat the second part of your question. So the second part is, you say your users are the clinics. Yeah. So does it mean for the clinics to make use of it, they have to specify that all their patients have to have personal monitoring devices so that their patients buy the device and take home and use with them? Or how exactly does the patient and the hospital use the device? All right, so um, let me start with this. When you go to your hospital, they take uh, objective and subjective data, you go, they take your vital signs yes. in the hospital. In the hospital. That yeah. is one entry point for getting data. And secondly, um, if someone that's having a heart condition, your doctor will always recommend you get a speak. It's always online, a local doctor will always tell you, measure your blood pressure. So for us, we, s we saw an opportunity that some devices may not be connected devices. It means they are analog. So we created an option called manually upload your, your data. You check your vital sign, it's 8010. 800, immediately you just type in that value and the AI does the stuff. It's the same data that is going in. So it's both the integ integral of patients who have analog device, those who have, who don't have, and also the hospital entry points. And doctors will always recommend um, get a device to check your, 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 your blood pressures, check your vitals, so that we can monitor and help improve your health. Okay. So okay. finally, the payments. So do the patients pay for access to the app? All right. So we do it this so way. Can you take this shortly, like All right, yeah. So we do it this, this way. We understand that hospital has the different service delivery system. They have their different package. So what we do is that we provide a plan to clinic. Clinics set their own rates. This, the, whatever is, if the public clinic and they have services such as, or, or you look at uh, the NHRO, and NHIS that they have in the system, they have their patient that is having or uh, HMO, whatever, whatever is there, they set their own plan. We give them an admin access that help, enables them to set whatever charges they want to charge their patients.
speaking. Thank you very much. Thank you. A round of applause.